The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. Uh, Dave Richardson uh, <clears throat> has over 40 years of experience in the field. He is... Uh, Dr. Richardson is associate professor at uh, the uh, University of Missouri, Missouri University of Science and Technology at Rolla. He has a very varied background. He has worked in for the St. Louis County Highway Department. He has worked for two different construction firms, uh, three different engineering firms, including his own, uh, two different testing labs, including his own, for 22 years. And as I mentioned, he is associate professor at the university, where he also runs continuing education and the QCQA certification for MoDOT. Um, he is PE in two states. He's ACI grade one field examiner. And he's going to be talking to us this afternoon about <clears throat> an upcoming document that, in, that we are uh, in the very final stages of in committee 325 for proportioning for concrete pavements. And Dr. Richardson has been uh, the lead and the task group chair on this, which means he's done 99% of the work uh, for putting this document together, uh, much of which was actually hurting all the other cats who had small roles like myself. So uh, please welcome David Richardson. Tim's already introduced what, what this is. It's a brand new document uh, for ACI. Uh, some years ago, uh, out of the 211 committee, they split off a few of these specific to the, the um, subject at hand, and uh, we inherited this. Okay, so here's the outline of what we're going to talk about, just a little bit on our mission, our scope, and that will explain a lot of things to you. What you're going to see, and then the plan, and there, there's uh, about six bullets down there uh, as we go through uh, how we went about. Uh, doing this. Our mission is re was very simple. is just to pare down the 211 document. You notice the date on there to just pavements. So we took out all the other stuff. Okay, And uh, right there in the beginning of this document, it, it kind of prepares the reader. It says this document's intended to be used as a supplement to the 211. Okay, So you got to have both of them out in front of you when you go through this thing, specifically for paving. Uh, the scope is to follow the 211 procedure, and that is key to your understanding. This is nothing crazy new, but we're going to hear three of those after me. But this is the following the party line on the 211 document and just tweaking it for, for pavements. So I, uh, some of the obvious things, unnecessary to repeat some of the 211, so some of this document will say go see the 211, and it's uh, specific to paving. All right, so step one, we're going to assemble an expert task force. That failing, we got together the group of guys that actually worked on it. And uh, I think it's important to understand we, most, we had most of the hats, most of the hats around this table. It's a pretty small, uh, uh, effective group. That's the way I like to do things. We've had several Corps of Engineers. Folks there, uh, several uh, cement manufacturers, I'm going to call you guys field engineers for lack of a better, more uh, correct uh, title, mainline paving contractor, MIC designer, uh, consulting engineer uh, that deals with pavements all the time, an aggregate supplier rep, uh, concrete research center engineer, a commercial testing lab engineer, and a uh, university engineering faculty member. And Peter, I never know if you all, I, I am one, I don't know if you are, I never have figured it out, you can tell. We also, uh, I took it upon myself to grab a few extras out there and run, uh, be in constant contact, we had an FAA pavement designer, uh, in fact the chief, uh, state DOT materials engineer, and a large metropolitan ready mix. So we pretty well had all the, all the players, I think. Uh, so after that, we uh, started gathering up uh, pavement design 
excuse me, I say pavement design, mixture design and proportioning documents that are out there that deal with paving, some part of them. And we uh, ended up with exactly 100, amazingly enough. And uh, we can cast your eye down through there. Uh, of course, on many ACI documents, um, FAA, uh, uh, military, IPRF, AASHTO, ASTM, and so forth, and on down the list, lots of them. So, and then, of course, journals and, and uh, periodicals that are out there, too. So step three, uh, amongst this, this crew of motley characters, uh, we gathered up mixed designs. We want to see what's out there, what, what are, what's in, being used, what's important. Uh, so uh, we got uh, all these mixture designs contributed, have actually been used successfully, and that, that and we pulled through there and, and picked out uh, about the 50 that uh, kind of cut across a lot of things and represented a lot of things. We were looking to see what gradings are actually used out there, gradations, uh, admixtures, SCMs, and different problem scenarios like ASR, or sulfate, that kind of thing. Uh, all over the country, I'll show you a map, uh, covered about 18 states. Uh, the, uh, they included the four basic types of pavements that we're looking at and the three basic types of materials. So there's the more or less a repeat of what I had up there. These are all the folks. Now, some of these are not on the task force itself, and we squeeze some mixtures out of those folks. Here's all the places, uh, as we can see. I got this light pointer that, uh, let's see if I can make it work. Yeah, now that's a light pointer, okay? I'm colorblind, and I can't see out of one eye and blind in the other. And these, these other little things they give you, I never can see them. They, you know, you'll be standing there, and they'll get, as you can see on this, and I don't see anything. I don't know what they're pointing at. So Mark Luther gave me this. This is a Russian military knockoff. <laughs> it is uh, illegal in every state except Texas. Uh, I actually go hunting with this. I knock down squirrels, rabbits, small game. So uh, on Saturdays, I, I work in a beauty shop, take molds off. So it's a... Uh, it's uh, pretty, pretty good. Anyway, we go from Florida to Maine, uh, southern Texas to North Dakota or South Dakota, uh, up there to Washington or Oregon, uh, out west, you name it, all over the place. So we got quite a, quite a bit. Uh, basic facilities, we've got some runways, taxiways, both core and FAA spec, uh, DOT highways, some retail parking lots, heavy industrial parking lots. And city streets. So those basic pavements were this, this document deals with. And the basic uh, equipment and methods, you got slip form or fixed form or uh, some sort of screening. So what we find out, just, just for laughs, let's just see what we gathered up. Uh, is, is optimized grading used out there? Is, is more than one course area used out there? Absolutely. It's probably two-thirds of the designs we saw were either two or three course aggregates. About a third still the traditional single. So ASTM size numbers uh, all over the map, and these will be in various combinations. I counted 12 combinations of two or three. And uh, interestingly enough, a lot of times we think about, say, a medium uh, 57 or 67 with a smaller one as the intermediate, but there were a number of designs where uh, the, the intermediate was, was that middle size. And so uh, that was kind of interesting. Sand percent, in case anybody cares. Um, I know why I'm old, I'd always use 38. Uh, cement types, usually a one, sometimes a two. I tried to stay away from the, in this presentation, we did get a few high early mixes, but they're not really part of what I'm going to show you here, although there were some pretty high, I just, some of these is a little hard to tell. So we had kind of some of a little bit high on the, on that end, but uh, for the mo most part, they're, they're, they're down around that four, five, six hundred mark. And then for just the PC mixes with no SCMs uh, all over the place on that. Fly ash percents, uh, 15 to 25, with uh, uh, quite a few right around that 19 and 20 mark. Slags higher, of course. And then admixtures, pretty much, uh, of course, they're all air and train. Uh, well, I take that. Yeah, they, uh, there's a couple way south that weren't. But most of your uh, uh, type A and type D water uh, reducers uh, and a I'm not sure in these mixes we actually had any, any supers in there. Again, these were not high earlys. Uh, specified strengths, uh, range, pretty narrow range, 3,500 to 4,500 spec, 28 day. Uh, the average was about there. Uh, flex, the ones that did have flex in there, 
you can see the numbers there. Uh, water cement ratios, a uh, pretty wide range, but frankly most of them are right around that 0.40 to 0.42. And specified slumps, well of course it went with the type of uh, uh, pavement equipment. Slip form was down around that two, two inch, or, and that was specified. The actual mixes were a little lower than that actually. Uh, fixed form, of course, uh, pretty wide range in specification, but frankly they were all up around that three to four inch mark. And laser, laser guided were about that or a little higher. All right, after we did that, we said, okay, now we, we know what's out there. We've talked to all the various people. Let's define our objectives. That's always scary. Uh, so to do that, you gotta know three things. You gotta know who the players are in a project. You gotta know uh, what the context of what you're doing. And then if there's anything special about it. Uh, so the players are, of course, the, the designer, the specifier. It's going to be putting out the spec. Then you've got the, the co paving contractor who may, within that, need some extra things in there. Maybe it's uh, the strength is 28 days, but the paving contractor needs something up early. So they'll be talking back and forth to accomplish the things the paving contractor wants. And then there's always the producer. What can they do, really? You know, it doesn't do a lot of good to specify a whole bunch of SCMs you don't, or, or aggregates, and, and they don't have the capability of doing that. So they've got a hand in that, too. All right, the context is you got to know, we'll get more into this, but really your thickness and what's, what's going on with the production facility, what are their capabilities, same with construction, what do they want, and are there anything special about the climate, or is it a sulfate situation, is it freeze-thaw, whatever. Uh, then in the special, and when I talk about that, we're talking about alkali aggregate. You break that down in, into the, the two types, uh, sulfate attack, uh, freeze-thaw, uh, some folks call it decracking, but freeze-thaw deterioration, and then all kinds of material incompatibility issues. All right, so basically we're, we're going to file the 211 absolute volume method. That's, uh, that was in concrete, you might say. Narrow focus to payments, uh, document that has been around a while, it's gonna need some updating. A lot more detail on handling water content adjustments. You know, if you use that water table in the document, many times uh, you may come up with too much water. Well, there's advice about, well, how to, how to start trimming that down based on uh, coarse and finite particle shapes, your air, water reducers, SMs, fibers. Did I say cut it down? I mean, sometimes you gotta bring it back up, so plus or minus water adjustments. Um, and then bring, bring things online in terms of mainstream type of uh, operations, state of the practice. Uh, brought in uh, a lot of people using it, we can't stick our head in the sand anymore. We've got to talk about optimized grading as an option. Uh, more information on the SCMs and mixtures and fibers. Uh, and then some pre-qualifying testing, so in other words, uh, uh, sometimes you may uh, have to do some uh, triple six on the three thaw or, or look at uh, identifying and mitigating AAR, sulfate, and incompatibilities. And then, um, depending on whose spec you're, you're laboring on, it will throw you into a different way of calculating the required strength. And uh, so we, we threw some specifics in there on how to do that. So all in all, hopefully you can d deal with all these different kinds of things, air loss through the paver, that sort of thing, and also uh, account for the water content of the admixtures. All right, so a little more insight on this. This you got to keep thinking, you know, you've you, you got your materials, but they're going to interact with performance, with the production facilities, with the equipment that the contractor has and the methods. That's all uh, interaction, and that was a thrust of the whole document was to bring all those parties and all their needs and wants and desires together as you're going through this. Okay, sustainability course uh, had a, a section in there. And uh, bottom line, this is just on paper, right? Okay, so don't, don't expect too much. We're just trying to get you as close as we can for the first time. All right, so we, uh, what are we after? We got a few things on plastic we'd like. Constructability can be broken down. You notice it's more or less in order of what's gonna happen. Uh, time of setting and strength gain. Hardened concrete, strength, durability, maybe abrasion, maybe skid, maybe smoothness for the ride, and of course our dimensional and uh, shape stability. So, one more time, you know, this is an on paper thing. Sometimes people say kind of silly things, I think. They say, oh, well, this isn't working. Well, of course not. It's not supposed to. You're supposed to get in there and do some trial work. 
We're just trying to cut down the number of trials you're going to have to do. So, all right. So finally produced the guide. So now we're finally getting into it. There are seven chapters. Uh, first one deals with uh, just, just a little blurb on, on design and proportioning definitions, what's all involved there. Chapter two is your standard notation definitions. Then we get into it. Chapter three is looking at your desired properties. What do you want for this mix? Hardened and plastic properties, okay? And then bringing in the effects of the materials on those properties. Nominal max size, gradation, you name it. How are each one of those affecting each one of these? Next one down, uh, just a little bit on materials. Most of that's up here now. Uh, and then bringing in those special pre-qualifying tests for uh, ASR and, and uh, sulfate and that sort of thing. Then the, uh, finally, the, the proportioning procedure. All this is your design, but the proportioning coming down, the tables, how to enter, what you need to be thinking about. And then sample calculation. You know, I mean, in, in um, education, I'm big on that. It's, you know, it's one thing to have somebody read something or tell them something, but nothing's happening until they work some examples. So we've got uh, exactly 50% of the document is on uh, six sample uh, situations that covers all the stuff that we've been talking about. And then the references, of course. So in terms of um, chapter one, just got a slide here. Design includes all this stuff. Up here you're talking about what are your desired outcomes in terms of the production, what are they needing and thinking, construction, your service life, economy, sustainability, two different approaches, your uh, prescriptive and your performance. Uh, then you select your materials based on all that, and then you proportion it. And if you don't know what proportion it is, there it is. Okay. Got through all that. Those are just kind of preliminary. Skip right down to Chapter 3, your desired properties and effects of the materials on those properties. So we're, I'm going to just kind of pick and choose through here. I'm not going to go through every last thing, but the first section in here is on workability. We broke it down uh, into several kinds, as we'll see. But in this section, again, we're thinking about the water, the aggregate, the cement, SCMs, air, and your uh, admixtures. All right, now here's the things that the old designer may have to make choices on. He may not be able to, I said he, I'm sorry, he or she may uh, have all these or some of these that they need to make choices on. Sometimes you only got one aggregate, but sometimes you got more than. Even my little dinky town, we got two aggregates, okay? So which one? Red one, green one, red one, green one. All right, so we're thinking about shape and texture. Choosing a gradation. Is it going to be traditional or is it going to be optimized? Nominal max, that's a big player. That modulus of elasticity and, and coefficient of thermal expansion, you know, they kind of go in with what you've chosen, but there's something to think about there. Mineralogy has something to do with a lot of these types of SCMs, flash, class C, class F, slag. What are we using? How much and their character. So, you know, there's a picture, a traditional picture of flash, little balls, it tells you something there. And the effects on uh, uh, thermal uh, profiles. Uh, Finest of cement, air content, proportions, your uh, admixtures. Uh, these are the choices you, you might be able to make to uh, optimize what you're doing. Okay, so first one up in terms of workability is are you going to be able to mix this successfully? What are we interested in? Well, we certainly want within batch uniformly. We've got to be able to mix this stuff so it's pretty much the same from the front and back of the load, and then from load to load, because if that's goofed up, then there's a lot of these desired properties are going to belly up, okay? And then in case of, or in the case of central mix, maybe mixing time is important to the contractor, so we want this material to be easily mixed, okay? And then we've got to get it to the site, okay, either in dump trucks or, or uh, down in Arkansas, <clears throat> where I spent a lot of my career, that's uh, one of the more uh, up-to-date uh, <laughs> transit mix trucks we got. Uh, but anyway, we want to get it there without segregating the stupid stuff. Okay, so then we got to place it. Okay, so we've got various machines, pieces of equipment. Again, we want, it's the Goldilocks deal. We don't want it too dry. We don't want it too wet. Now, if you guys can see that, can you see that? What do we got going there? Okay, and 
Oh, my gosh. No wonder it's too wet. I just saw that guy. What's he doing there? <laughs> anyway, slip form, fixed form. Got to have it placed to be able to place it without segregation. And, and depending on the equipment, you know, that you may be moving that material around a little bit. And if it segregates right then and there by, by the machine, then that's not good. Then we got to get in and screed it and consolidate it. And boy, there's all kinds out there. And I've, I got a lot of slides on that. Some of you just absolutely wouldn't believe. But uh, here's the main ones here. And they're really different, and they need a different mix. So you need to know what you're, you're going to do with this. Then we got to finish it. Okay, well, wouldn't it be nice if it just slip on out of there and we wouldn't have to touch it? And the more we touch it, the more problems we might have. And here's our uh, little buddy right, right down there for blessing the slab. Then we got to texture it. You know, this may drive you on, on gradation, uh, a lot of things. So we have to successfully get these deep enough, uniformly, can't have a, a bunch of slobbers there and fill them back in, those serrations. Get, so got to, you can do a lot of things right and then it belly up on you right here, depending on what you're doing. Then we get into strength, of course. Sometimes that matters a lot. If you've got a, a, a strength spec, and, or uh, not a spec, but an uh, uh, incentive, or maybe not. So, uh, uh, of course, we design on flex. We may QC on compressive. Sometimes we design on compressive. And then there's a section in here on early strength. So we got all three there. Uh, then we get into durability, okay? So uh, we're looking at mainly freeze thaw, deicer, sulfate, and some form of alkali aggregate. Got all the pictures here. Didn't have one of pavement, so <laughs> sulfate. Durability, we go on. There's abrasion resistance, possibly. That might be of importance to you if there's snow plowing or you got an industrial lot where they're scooting stuff around, it's powdering up the concrete, uh, uh, forklift, hard wheels, that kind of thing. Uh, spalling at the joints is of interest uh, at airfields, for sure. Other places, too, that's, that's just a real no-no there. And then, again, in terms of uh, calibration of hard stands, power check pads, militaries, and interested in that. We've got a little section on that in there, too. Skid, got to have it. Um, depends on a lot of things, and so I won't say too much more there, but uh, sometimes we have to pay attention to that, not get the wrong aggregate, what it boils down to. And then for those of us doing the DOT work, there's a lot of these incentives or disincentives. I had bonuses and deducts, but somebody maybe changed those a little too hard. But uh, so much of what happens here ends up being measured here. So you've got to be able to slip it through and finish it and not have those low spots and tearing and get the guys out there with the trying to straighten it out again and then screwing up the top half inch. So. Anyway, it's all connected. Then we get into dimensional shape stability. Dimensional meaning uh, axial contraction or, or shrinkage and expansion. Uh, shape stability is your warping and curling. Okay, so those all in this chapter. We did some things on cracking. There's all kinds of cracking. You can't read that, I know, but, but we're talking about thermal and autogenous and, and a little bit of settlement and then uh, drying and plastic shrinkage cracking. All the different kinds of cracking are discussed in here and looking at trying to prevent those early age cracks. Uh, just a few shots on wouldn't it be nice if we built on frictionless pucks and we could cut out half of this stuff, but we don't. So there's restraint, there's stress uh, from the strain, and so modulus is important. And then we get either cracks where we want them or where we don't want them. And important to that is to let modulus elasticity in your CTE. Dry and shrinkage, well, it's water, right? But there's also restraint by the aggregate. And so those two play together, and you try to optimize that. So dry and shrinkage are very important to us, okay? And then good old plastic shrinkage cracking, again, that's somewhat a function of the mix. So this is all things that are a function of the mix. Curling and warping, or warping and curling, or curling warping, depending on who you are and how old you are and what you read, I've, I've had to change my definition so it's a mental jump for me. So I'm sure I'll say it wrong here. But sometimes they help each other out and sometimes they cancel each other a bit. And the nice thing about it is, you know, you can just forget all this stuff. 
and don't put in any joints and let nature put them in for you. So, you know, it'll happen. Nature hates rectangles. It loves squares. All right, dimensional and shape stability, some more. This all plays into how far apart you can put your joints, and that's a big deal to a, a DOT engineer, and also how good the load transfer is going to be. So we do that two ways. I know a lot of folks really don't like to think about um, or put much stock in aggregate interlock, but so there are some pavements that don't have dolls, and so that is important. So there's some things about the mix that affect that too. And then finally, uh, Chapter 3 has... Uh, time of setting and, and some things on cost and then sustainability. That gets us into four. Four, really, most of the materials have already been discussed, so there's a little bit on each one, but then it gets into the, the hard stuff. Do you have uh, free saw or, or decracking issues? If you do, our state does. We're in the Midwest. Um, <clears throat> so we've got, of course, the triple six, the devil's test which is kind of the gold standard, but it takes the dadgum long. There are some skinnies out there on approximating that with um, aggregate tests. We developed one there at, at Missouri, and, and many others have too, sure. ASR, uh, this is a moving target, if there ever was one. Uh, we've been working on this thing four years, and I've probably rewritten that chapter four times. I've quit. I'm not changing it anymore. So whatever I got, that's it. I'm, I'm hoping I'm, it's okay. I have, uh, Tom Van Dam helped me out with that. And I think we got the latest and greatest in there. But you got to identify it. Do you have it or not? And then what kind is it? Is it a, uh, ASR or ACR? If, you're, if it's ACR, you know, you just, <laughs> you just forget it. But if it's ACR, there are some mitigation possibilities. And then there's a whole a bunch of stuff there that you can look at that. Now, we have given you a glimpse into that with this document and um, a, a more or less a, a, a view from 10,000, well, a little more specific than that, but we tell you about the identification, mitigation, but if you really got to do it, we point, point you towards uh, the ASHTO document. And we do the same thing with sulfate. Internal curing, it's an, uh, another new thing that's come along. We have a section on that in there also. Cementitious, uh, mainly going to talk to you here real quick about SCMs, your fly ashes, two flavors there, and everything in between, and um, uh, slag. Uh, generally, the, a lot of the, the, the stuff that's out now has to do with compatibility. You know, we're, we're just seeing more and more different materials put in there, and um, and we expect more, and our natural materials are getting uh, not, not as uh, uh, plentiful. So I'm going to finish this off real quick. Tim will come in and talk to you about that other. We do a little bit, kind of show you some things here in the document about incompatibilities. But again, if you're really going to do it, you need to uh, go to something else. Um, what else? Anything else? Um, getting down to proportioning, this is pretty much right out to 11. So the same tables, it's an absolute volume method. Uh, the tables, a lot of them are, are either right out of the 211 or uh, out of, they use 318 and, and we've added in 201 for uh, uh, selecting your water content and your, uh, now this is our table, but uh, advice on slump and air, not content, but reduction of water, and uh, a little bit on freeze thaw, a little bit on sulfate. Um, strength, like I said, we bumped that up to show you how to do that. I've got some limitations on SCMs. All important down here. If you want to make this d document work, you got to pay attention to that right there. That is key. These, these mixes that we brought in, uh, very much we're doing that and uh, you have to pay attention to that. And then you back out the fine aggregate out of it. So, uh, about ready to finish up. I did want to mention our examples. It's half the document. We got, well, six, but really five of them in the U.S. customary. We got slip form in there, fixed form, laser guided screed. We got a sulfate soil in there, an ASR. We got highways, city streets, airfields, uh, big box retail parking lot. We got traditional two aggregate, optimized three aggregate, optimized four aggregate, class C, slag, fly ash, and fibers. So we got example, worked examples in there on all those, and to me that's that's what you gotta do. 
and the examples where they are. So, I am right on time of being out of time. Appreciate your attention. <laughs>